Hi guys and welcome to another 7 minute lecture. We are looking at the importance of the Indian Ocean today, especially in terms of geopolitics. I want us to pay particular attention to some of the myths about the Indian Ocean that need to be dispelled. It's an ocean that isn't in the news as much as the Atlantic or the Pacific, but all of that is changing because most scholars agree that in the 21st and 22nd centuries, what is known as the Indian Ocean region and the countries that have coastlines in this region will emerge as one of the most influential locations in the world. The Indian Ocean is the third largest ocean in the world, but don't let that fool you. In terms of trade, about 80% of the world's crucial oil trade is conducted through the Indian Ocean. So for all of us watching this video right now, no matter where we are, at some point of time, you have been a beneficiary of trade going through the Indian Ocean. So while it might not be the biggest in terms of size, it's certainly the biggest in terms of economic potential. And as we all know, what happens when a region has significant economic potential? The great powers of the world compete over it, of course. And this brings me to the first myth about the Indian Ocean, that it's somehow emerging now as a power center in the, 20, in the 21st century. This is not true at all. The Indian Ocean has always been a power center and a predominant one at that. While it might be true, that for a brief period of time during the Western age of exploration for a couple of centuries, while it might be true that the Atlantic Ocean became more important, for the vast majority of human history, this has been the center of political and economic power in the world. Those of you who are familiar with history will know what the Silk Road was. For those of you who aren't, the Silk Road was a network of trade routes that connected the West and the East from around the 2nd century BC to around the 15th and 16th centuries AD. The road started from the eastern corner of China and went through Central Asia, Persia, Arabia and from there it splits into Northern Africa and Western Europe. So the world has been deeply interconnected for over 2000 years and it was the Indian Ocean that served as the maritime counterpart to the land-based Silk Road. There have been many wars fought for control of the Indian Ocean even in ancient times such as the Chola Empire in South India and the Sri Vijaya Empire in Indonesia way back in the 10th century which ultimately led to the Tamils ruling almost the whole of Southeast Asia for centuries. So if anything, the Indian Ocean is now re-emerging as a great power, not emerging. So don't let any of these supposed experts fool you into thinking of this as some kind of new phenomenon, which many of them for some reason do. The second myth that's often prevalent about the Indian Ocean is that the primary rivalry here is between China and the United States. That's not the case either. While it's certainly true that both the Americans and the Chinese have a strong presence there, and while it's certainly true that the global geopolitical race right now is between these two powers, the actual competition in the Indian Ocean is between China and India. The United States doesn't have a large presence in the overall region. It certainly has a huge presence near the Strait of Hormuz because there's Sunni Saudi Arabia and Shia Iran on either side of it and that's where most of the oil trade goes through so either of them could shut down the strait as part of a war which would cl uh, cripple the global oil trade so the Americans are there in large numbers to make sure those shenanigans aren't pulled. They also have control of a territory called Diego Garcia which is a small island in the middle of nowhere in the Indian Ocean which has been leased to them by the British which they mostly use for surveillance but beyond that what the Americans are really lacking in the Indian Ocean region is diplomatic support, which is crucial when push comes to shove. While the USA certainly has strong diplomatic partners in the Asia-Pacific, when it comes to the Indian Ocean itself, all its partners are dependent on US power rather than being reliable partners in their own right. Like let's say Japan or South Korea would be in the Asia-Pacific. Nobody exists in that sense in the Indian Ocean for the Americans. 
The third and final myth I'd like to cover is this notion that even in the Indo-China competition, that China somehow has the lead, which could well be true, but there's certainly no evidence of it. Even though most international scholars take it for granted that China has the advantage, I'm yet to see any real evidence of it. And it's not just my personal bias talking. It is true that China has established strong diplomatic and economic ties with strategic ports like Chittagong, Gwadar, Hambantota. There's very little the Chinese can do to leverage these in a warlike situation without them losing all their international clout. While these are all great ports to extend uh, soft power like economics, diplomacy throughout the region, trying to militarize these ports is far more likely to backfire on the Chinese than to actually work because these ports are not in Chinese territory. China merely has business agreements with Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka for these ports. If China tries to use them as a platform from which to launch naval operations, it will immediately find itself at a disadvantage because number one, it would make it very tricky for those countries to continue to be China's partner. And number two, it would give India's maritime allies like the Americans and the French to mobilize immediately. I see so many experts simply taking it for granted that China has now become this unbeatable power in the Indian Ocean. And the rationale they usually give is that China has all these ports under its control. But these experts never seem to factor in either the economic or the diplomatic cost of militarizing these ports. And the reason they don't is probably because looking into those things would destroy their entire thesis of Chinese dominance in the Indian Ocean. China is certainly the economic powerhouse of the Indian Ocean as of now, no dispute there, but that's very different from military capacity. So that's it guys, those are some of the major myths about the strategic power balance in the Indian Ocean. If you like this video, please don't forget to share and subscribe. Thank you, take care and I'll see you soon.